times are still very tough and you know you can read almost every day about cutbacks I would say just from what I'm noticing it's not as fast and furious and as uh, uh, as terrible as it was even two or three years ago, um, we're still seeing you know terrible things. You know the the uh, scale back of the Times Picayune in New Orleans. That was a paper that you know he held the city together during Katrina or helped hold it together. Um, so that's not a great thing to see. That they're staying there and that there's a migration online. At least they're going to be there in that form and again three days a week. And we're seeing a little bit uh, seeing that happen in other areas, but. In general, I would have to say the economy has been a little bit better, and I think there's been a realization among media organizations that they're going to have to change if they're going to survive, and that in many cases that uh, need for change has brought the investment that's uh, necessary to, to not only keep things going, but to expand them and position them for the future. In terms of how our students, or I would say our graduates, are doing here at the uh, City of New York uh, graduate school of journalism, um, in the last two years we're seeing folks get jobs quicker and get better jobs. And I, I think a lot of that is a function of the economy, again, but I think there's also a little bit more optimism than there was even just, you know, two to three years ago. There are more and more employers who are looking for people who can do it all. There's an expression, you know, you can be a jack of all trades and a master of none. These days you have to be a master of all trades. There's an expectation in the audience that it's not just going to be in one form. There's video, there's audio. We're seeing a lot more in terms of interactive graphics, which allow people to, to get deeper in the topics. Yeah, I mean, it works from a couple of different ends. I mean, social media is really the place where a lot of folks get their news, and they get news from folks they trust, whether it's, you know, friends who, who post links, or whether they're following certain people on Twitter, or whether they're using Twitter lists to, to get their news. It's very possible to come up with a Twitter list and to kind of get a good news digest for the day. Um, obviously, with, with social media, there's uh, also the, po the possibility and probability of a lot of bad information being put out there. So I think it creates um, a real opportunity for journalistic organizations. It's not like the old days where you created something and somebody tuned into your channel or they bought your newspaper or they turned on your radio station. You've got to get the news out to the people in a more aggressive way. One of the things we're seeing now is a demand for what uh, people are calling, for lack of a better term, social media editors. Uh, people whose job it is within a news organization to, to push out stories. And I know uh, it may not be, uh, it's not just pushing out stories, right? Because the whole great thing about the, the internet, the whole reason behind social media, it's not just a one-way push, it's a back and forth. So it's creating a dialogue with folks. Um, it's also in, in some cases using um, the public to, to get information. Uh, amazing, th it was a tragedy, but some amazing thing happened here fairly recently where there was a shooting um, near the Empire State Building. Um, yeah, obviously it was uh, terrible, somebody was killed, but in terms of the way that it played out, people first response for a lot of folks is to take out their iPhones, their cameras, take pictures, and send them to media organizations. And some, um, uh, some media organizations ran galleries of the photos. Uh, I wouldn't say in real time, but pretty damn close to real time. Um, even as still um, the details of the event was unfolding. And yes, it may seem uh, in some ways chaotic, but ultimately it put a lot of information out there very quickly. And it really reinforced the importance of the, um, of the role of the journalist to take this and give it some kind of elegant organization. Um, but it also shows that, look, uh, with or without journalism organizations, people are going to take pictures, people are going to send out information, people are going to post videos. Um, you know, big part of the role now is to curate that and to, to put it out in a way that uh, that makes some sense, that helps tell a story. And we've seen this with uh, uh, 
with uh, folks like Storify, where it's kind of telling a story through uh, as it unfolds in social media, which isn't the be-all and end-all, but it becomes a very important part of the, of the story. And it's amazing to see things roll out almost in real time like that. There are, uh, there's definitely a premium on folks who can kind of do it all, um, who are facile with video, who are facile with audio, um, even more so now with uh, being able to put together good information graphics. Um, you know, folks who can uh, contribute to um, uh, getting their own stories out through social media, who already have networks or know how to find or create new ones. Um, you know, our, our, there's also... We're, uh, seeing that our, our students or our graduates do very well in, in certain fields in terms of business journalism right now, where not only are uh, there are a pretty decent amount of jobs, but there's a demand for people who can tell stories in, in more than just the print form. Um, you know, in, in general, not everybody is going to be great at everything. That's part of the reality. But in terms of, you know, packaging stories and working in teams and everybody speaking the same language, um, I think that's um, really uh, a skill that, you know, folks bring to it, that they're, that they're familiar and facile enough with everything that they can work well quickly and in team situations. And look, in, in sometimes not even in, in team situations, you know, you've got people who literally backpack journalists who with a, an iPhone, uh, laptop, um, and, you know, some, you know, very small equipment are able to, to parachute into a scene and, and turn around stories in different forms, different media, and more importantly, get it out there quickly. You know, I, I think it works a couple of ways. I think that the increase, the clear increase in quality um, is going to help in terms of making more attractive uh, um, journal journalistic packages. I think people whose knock before was, oh, that's just a camera phone picture, people don't say that anymore. I think it goes beyond journalism because it's just not the journalists who are buying these. Everybody has them, and everybody's out. They take a picture they think is interesting, and they just, they've just they got a one-click to their Facebook. All their friends are seeing it, and you know friends are commenting on it, and friends are sharing it and spreading it. So I think that um, you know the, it's incumbent on journalists to take advantage of of this change in the culture. It's not it's not just you know changes in journalism. It's changes in how we all live, and we've got to be part of that. We've got to um, we've got to add value. I mean, it's the one one of the things that we can do as journalists. You know, to, to give a little context to to put to really put things together in an elegant way. Um, but I think the, the technology is only going to get better, and it's only going to, to make for better journalism. It's also going to increase the expectations of what the, the general public um, wants and, and what they see in terms of not, not just quality, but in terms of, of speed and turnaround and uh, um, really putting together things in a, uh, in a you know, more quick and comprehensive way. I, you know, to any young journalist, I would say, um, you know, know, know your tools, know how to use them, know how to use them well. Um, you know, I go back to the old Spider-Man uh, uh, saying, um, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Anybody can be out there and snap a picture and, or take a video and put it up for the world. What you have um, is a ability of journalists to do this in a way that, uh, that brings value and context and, and really tells a story. But really the crux of telling stories is being out there and talking to people and listening to people. I mean, listening is the best skill you can have. Um, and sometimes that listening comes face to face, and sometimes that listening comes through social media. You know, know what's happening in the world, and then go out there physically and chronicle what's happening in our times. And uh, no matter what, all we do, all great journalism is people-driven. Um, the tools that we have just help us tell the stories better.